First item of business is plan of finance, Mr. Manager. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of council. With us this afternoon is our city financial advisor, Kyle Louts, with Davenport and Associates. Uh, Kyle will be presenting our plan of finance and the schedule for the upcoming bond issuances. Kyle, welcome. Okay. Uh, Mr. Manager, Mr. Mayor, Mayor, members of council, nice to see everybody. Uh, this afternoon, as always, um, as the manager mentioned, Kyle Locks from Davenport. It's a little bit of a while since we've seen you in person, but um, excited to be back um, in front of you. Um, what we'll walk through today, um, I think for many of you that have been on council for a number of years, shouldn't be too much of a surprise as you've worked through uh, the budget cycle. And as we get to this kind of spring and summertime, really season, thinking about how it is we go forward and really enact the budget and really the capital program that's been adopted um, by you as a city council. So we've got some slides within here, um, and Mr. Mayor, others um, be happy to answer questions as we walk through it. Um, as you see that up on the screen here, and we'll see if we can advance the slides. There we go. Um, so again, um, as we've done uh, many times in the past this time of year, um, you've worked through the budget, you've worked through the capital program, um, adopted those things, and so we're really at a point now where we're in the, we'll call it the execution phase of that capital program, really meaning planning on moving forward with the borrowing um, that was included within that adopted program. So we really have two parts to that this year. Um, we have our general obligation bonds for general city and school capital projects. We'll talk you through some details here on the next couple pages. Um, and the other piece that will be a little bit new this year, uh, but it's not necessarily a new program for the city, is stormwater utility enterprise um, bonds. You've had for a number of years a stormwater utility fund. It is a self-supporting fund um, in some respects, just like you have a self-supporting water and sewer fund. Um, we have seen with you and with many of your peers the, the magnitude of the size of those capital needs that are required for stormwater um, for regulatory purposes or otherwise just getting a little bit larger. And this year we're going to enact for the first time um, a stormwater borrowing program um, via revenue bonds. So just like we do on water and sewer, it will be paid entirely from the stormwater fund. It will not count against our tax-supported debt capacity. So just like we talk about on water and sewer, making sure that water and sewer is self-supporting and doesn't eat into our ability to fund uh, general city and school capital projects, very similar concept with our stormwater fund. We'll be issuing self-supporting revenue bonds that will be paid entirely from that stormwater fund and thus protecting um, the general fund and the general fund's credit rating. So we'll walk you through some more details in the next couple pages. Obviously, bottom of the page there, we have our AAA credit ratings um, from all three rating agencies. Um, at the forefront of, I think, all of our minds is making sure we protect those credit ratings and so everything we're going to talk about in here kind of has that as an underlying assumption um, that we'll be doing that. I will note that um, the rating agencies and Moody's in particular as the world evolves a little bit, is kind of changing some of the ways they look at those AAA credit ratings. Um, and so we're very much um, engaged and on top of that and watching that. If you and your council members and other colleagues in other cities hear about that, um, we're very much watching that closely um, in terms of that evolution. But you're very well positioned um, as a city. Uh, so second page here, interest rates. Um, the, the sort of the timing of this briefing is, is interesting because there was actually a Fed meeting just a couple hours ago um, in terms of the, you know, the National Federal Reserve and doing what they're doing with interest rates that I think many of you are probably aware of. Um, and so we wanted to show you this page and this graph here because I think it provides a little perspective in terms of where we've been the last couple of years and where we are um, right now in terms of interest rates. Uh, so you've seen this graph, I think, before in past years. The left-hand side is a little bit longer-term history of what we call the 20 bond index, which is a kind of broad index for tax-exempt borrowing interest rates for local governments um, like you across the country. Um, and so what you see in that is you look back over the last 22 or so years since 2000, 
is we've had this general decline over that time period, but certainly marked with some spikes of volatility. Um, and where we've been the last two years, if you look at kind of the right-hand side of that graph, is basically at all-time low interest rates. So we've enjoyed that through calendar year 21, really calendar year 2020, even the year before that was very, very low. And so the city's been able to take advantage of that by virtue of borrowing at all-time low interest rates last couple times around, refinancing debt for a substantial amount of savings. Um, and all of the planning that we've done, we've enjoyed that, and that's worked you know, very nicely within the budget. We've purposely, working with um, the manager, working with finance and budget, we've always planned on a more conservative interest rate. So as we watch these interest rates move up right now in the marketplace, which they are moving up relative to where they were last couple years, you as a city have always been on the more conservative side in terms of planning. Um, so what you'll see in here is we've planned within the budget for something like a 5% interest rate. Um, we are substantially above where we were last year, but for the moment, we don't have any control over this on a day-to-day -day basis, but for the moment, we're still well below that, that planning estimate. Um, and so I think what you'll see in terms of the next steps is how we continue to move forward and try and make sure we capture you know, as favorable an interest rate as we can um, in the market as it evolves. So as we get to the, the general obligation bonds, and again, this is the, the funding program really for schools and for our general city capital projects, um, all obviously per the council adopted CIP. Um, it's about $30 million. You see the breakout there at the bottom of the page. Um, 18.9 million of general city projects and about 11 million dollars of school projects. So 29.9 million, I'll round that up for discussion purposes, to basically 30 million dollars <coughs> fitting within both the affordability um, and the capacity of the city. Um, the way we're planning on going about financing that, again, is utilizing those AAA credit ratings, which helps us go borrow at the lowest interest rates that are available in the market. Um, we'll do that via some publicly issued bonds um, over the next 45 days or thereabouts. Um, we'll talk through a schedule. But again, about $30 million fitting within the rating agency's expectations um, for what we would be doing on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, this next slide, um, kind of a variety of, of graphs and colors here. Um, but really showing how we compare relative to our uh, policies in terms of tax-supported debt capacity. So these are the limitations um, that we as a city put upon ourselves um, in terms of the outstanding tax-supported debt, and again, that being the debt that is paid for basically by the general fund. Um, Left-hand side of the page, you see tax-supported debt service, meaning the payments relative to the size of the budget. Um, we've got a policy that, that won't be above 10 percent, meaning no more than 10 cents out of every dollar in the budget goes to make a debt service payment, um, and we clearly have some uh, capacity relative to that even when we layer in the city's multi-year CIP. So it's a good situation. The right-hand side of the page, um, tax-supported debt versus assessed value. Similarly, um, in a good position there, our policy there, 4 percent. Um, and we hang in in around 2% given these estimates. So um, from a capacity standpoint, the city is in good shape. Um, the other very important portion of that um, sort of equation we think about the debt service side is the affordability side and making sure that the dollars are truly there within the budget to make those debt service payments. Um, and that's something that we focus on and really finance and budget focus on during the budget cycle. Um, you've clearly been in a good position the last couple years, um, but I think what we see going forward is needing to make sure we err with some caution. There's a lot going on in the world right now um, that could indeed slow things down. Hopefully it doesn't, um, but part of our job here is to, is to probably be, be the folks that wear the dark suits sometimes and just make sure we're, we're cautious in terms of how we think about that outlook. So for the moment, in good shape relative to the policies, um, but certainly want to make sure we're, we're thinking about how events in the world might impact us in terms of the budget going forward. Uh, 
Um, so flipping the, the page here um, and talking about the Stormwater Utility Enterprise Fund, uh, mentioned this on the front end. We've got that self-supporting fund. It does not take dollars from the general fund, protects the credit ratings of the general fund, um, protects the affordability and capacity on the general fund side, and so that's a best practice. Um, historically, all those stormwater projects have been able to be funded basically with, with cash on an annual basis, meaning we haven't had to borrow for those projects. Um, as we look at your CIP, as we work through that, um, with you and your staff, we see the magnitude of those projects getting bigger um, and getting bigger to a point where cash funding and paying for it annually out of the revenues that are generated just isn't going to be necessarily sufficient. So what we do, um, which is similar to what other local governments in your situation have done, same thing as you've done on the utility side, is to go borrow um, on an incremental basis um, for some of those projects, not all of them, but borrow for some of those projects um, and make sure that we can keep the cash flows and the self-supporting of that um, self-supporting nature of that fund intact um, with some incremental borrowing year over year. So bottom of the page there, you see the CIP projects that have been identified. It's about twenty-eight, twenty-nine million dollars over the next five years. Um, so what we're really putting in place is a plan that year by year we'll be able to evaluate what the needs really are on a cash flow basis. If there's a need to borrow some dollars, we'll put that program in place and have that ability, um, again, working within the budgeted revenues that are there. Trying to get to the next page here. I apologize. There's a way to do it manually. Yep, there we go. Thank you. Um, and so what you see is on this page here, our plan of finance. I think importantly what the plan of finance relies upon is a mixture of cash funding and bond funding. So we're not bond funding for everything, um, but really making sure that we get some initial upfront dollars um, so the projects can, can, can continue um, and be completed uh, knowing that they're going to be long-term projects that will benefit the rate payers for many, many years and be able to tie some borrowing to that such that the benefit of those projects is, is paid for over time. Um, and so what you see at the bottom of the page is, is simply how many dollars would be borrowed per year and how many dollars would be cash funded. Um, and you can see the expectation is borrow a couple more dollars on the front end to make sure these projects are up and running. The inaugural borrowing, first borrowing that we'd be talking about this summer is about $5 million. So order of magnitude, it's about $5 million um, that we're talking about this summer in terms of that stormwater utility um, borrowing. I think of, yep, thank you. Um, and so just a couple notes here in terms of how we would um, recommend going about that. A little bit different than the general obligation bonds. General obligation bonds, by virtue of the credit ratings, by virtue of the larger size, um, we'll sell those in the public marketplace like we've done. Um, with the stormwater utility fund, um, the size is a little bit smaller, about $5 million. Um, we don't necessarily need to go get a separate credit rating for that enterprise fund. Um, and so what we'll be doing um, at the same time as we're going through the general obligation bond process is to go competitively bid to banking institutions um, that roughly $5 million financing for the stormwater enterprise fund. Um, we'll be able to get those bids back um, basically over the next 30, 45 days so that we can bring that all back to you um, like we've done many times in the past in terms of the bank financing. You can see those results, see what banks bid, what the interest rates are, um, and give us some flexibility given this is the first uh, issuance of stormwater revenue bonds um, to maybe even negotiate a little bit as we might need to to make sure the terms and conditions are set up 
for the stormwater borrowing program um, in a way that is acceptable both to you and is acceptable, excuse me, acceptable to the, the lending institutions. Um, so again, we won't need a separate credit rating for the stormwater, um, just given the relative size of it. Um, similar to the water and sewer, we don't necessarily have a separate credit rating, but we still benefit from the city's general obligation credit ratings. Banks will see that, will understand that that is as uh, good as it gets in terms of credit ratings, and that will be kind of a signal to, to those lenders that the city is in good financial shape um, in terms of the management. Um, to the extent um, the bank financing route doesn't uh, sort of produce a result that is acceptable to, to you as a city council, or doesn't look good in terms of interest rate, et cetera, we do have the VRA, Virginia Resources Authority, as a backup. Um, that's kind of plan B, and we could go through that process in the fall. Basically, applications are due in early August. So we're able to, to dual track the stormwater financing such that, again, if for some reason banks don't want to play ball, we can bring that all back to you and be ready to move in the fall with the VRA program um, that really kicks off in about August over those next couple months. So if we can go to the next page. Uh, in terms of schedule, uh, we've, we've laid out left-hand side. Here's our, our general obligation bonds, our GOs. Right-hand side is the stormwater. Um, what we're really working towards is the next time we would be in front of council would be the 20th of July. There would be a public hearing uh, both for the GOs and the stormwater bonds. And at that time, we'd have the authorizations put together by your bond council, McGuire Woods. And at that point, council would be asked to take a you know, formal action to approve both those financings um, in terms of moving forward and have the, the public hearing. Uh, so after that, we'd be selling the GOs, um, uh, you know, right around uh, the early part of August there, um, and also looking to close on the bank financing for stormwater uh, again in early August. Um, we've got a couple backup dates there on stormwater to the extent they're needed in terms of negotiations, um, but really planning on having things for you at that July 20th meeting if we're able to, to move it along with, uh, with your blessing this evening. Um, so with that, I am happy to answer any questions, Mayor, members of Council. Um, that's all we have in terms of presentation for this afternoon. Okay. Thank you, Al. Uh, Councilman Goldberg. Let me get you turned on there. Here we go. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two things. One, uh, is it really necessary for us to borrow this money? And two, um, how does it affect our bond ratings overall? with the triple A's in, in doing this? Yeah, so I think um, good questions, Councilman. So I think two parts here. I'll start with the first one. So I think if you flip back a couple pages back to the, uh, the graphs there, the kind of the multi graphs that shows our policies. Um, so in terms of the impact, even go back just a couple more, the impact of the credit ratings, I think visually this is, this is what we want to see here, whereby what the rating agencies are expecting and planning on seeing by virtue of us being in AAA is making sure we're in compliance with these policies, um, and those are represented by that red line there. Um, and so we are well, well below um, both policies in terms of compliance there. On top of that, we know we've got a structurally balanced budget, and the economy locally is very good. So in terms of the impact of the credit ratings, we really see this being a very positive discussion with the rating agencies. Fund balances are good. Understand we're having a, a you know, positive year this year, had a positive year last year. Um, and so uh, we see that being a very positive discussion with the agencies going forward. Um, in terms of the necessity of it, I mean, clearly the, the uh, budget was adopted with a series of, of capital projects that, you know, kind of wide-ranging schools, general government, et cetera, and really the funding for those capital projects comes from, from these bonds. So I think it ties directly back to what, you know, what you, Mayor, and Council have, have said your priorities are in terms of capital projects. And so, um, you know, from, from our standpoint, that, you know, that sort of says it's, it's necessary to the extent we're going forward with those types of things. Sir. Councilman Johnson. 
my question is on the stormwater. Help me a minute. I, I want to make sure I understand. Stormwater, up to this point, we've taken care of through cash. Correct. Correct. That's right. And now we're looking at borrowing $5 million a year to, for ongoing stormwater projects? Yeah, it's about $5 million this year. It's in and around about $5 million next year to be determined as, as the capital program. And, sort of and this, is, this is in addition to the cash that we're paying? Because from the way I understand it, all of our stormwater fees go directly into stormwater, correct? Correct. So this is in addition to that for ongoing projects. Are these projects that we've already recognized as something we've got to go forward with? Yeah. To I the, missed the, something somewhere. That's why I'm just curious. I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, don't, so all all the projects are in the are in the CIP. So they are you know per per the adopted in you know city council blessed um, CIP. Um, and I think what we've seen is is the sort of the dollar value associated with those projects. The the annual revenue that you bring in um, just isn't sufficient to fully cash fund all the projects, which isn't necessarily a surprise. Right. No different than on water and sewer. You know, if you were going to cash fund everything on water and sewer or cash fund anything in the general fund, the revenue you'd have to bring in on an annual basis, and thus the rate you'd have to charge would be much, much higher than, than what it is right now. But I guess my, prop, my question is, and I'm, maybe the city manager needs to answer it, is all the fund we have literally through the years been putting storm water money aside, correct? I mean, we haven't always used it for stormwater projects. Haven't we built up a little bit of a, or am I wrong? Well, <clears throat> we use it uh, as we go along, both because you remember stormwater fund, ha uh, fund has operational costs too, so we've been using for operation. We have been using uh, funding for some of the capital projects uh, before also. But what we're trying to do here is to advance some of our capital programs. Uh, in, in the stormwater by uh, borrowing, and as we had talked on the capital, uh, on the capital plan, the 10 year plan on trying to advance and taking a look at financing some of those projects, which allow us to be a little bit more aggressive in, yeah. in addressing issues. Yeah, and I, I, I can agree with that. I just would like to see us cash fund stormwater as much as we can as we move into the future because it's going to become even more. I mean, I think this is just the beginning of, of, a, of a real waterfall effect here, and I'm afraid that. The cons taxpayers need to understand exactly what we're doing. I'm not sure they do because I'm not sure I do. So I just want to make sure that I understand that this is where this money's going, and we're going to be identifying it a little bit more explicitly every year as we go forward, right? I mean, that's it. Yeah, that, that, that's fair. And, and to your point on the on the cash balance too, similar to the general fund, you you do use on an annual basis some of that cash balance to cash fund the capital projects. We also mm -hmm. want to make sure. Just like on the utility fund side, we have a, a little bit of reserve over there. It's not a ton of dollars, but enough of a reserve that as the rating agencies go look at it, they say, okay, that is a self-supporting enterprise fund, and right. by virtue of that, we're not going to count it against our, our general fund capacity. Okay. So part and parcel of this is making sure that we can show that it's responsibly self-supporting, has some reserves, and your point, though, has a balance of cash funding and borrowing. We're not okay. borrowing for everything. Um, but to the mayor's, excuse me, manager's point, um, saw some kind of a series of projects that, in an effort to get those accelerated, um, went ahead and put, you know, kind of put this plan in place. Okay. I, I, thank you. Sir. Vice Mayor Bennett. Just to pick it back a little bit, because some of the questions I had jotted down have been answered. But my concern is I wanted to slide to show you a scale of fluctuating with the rates going up and down. And I think that's something that uh, I have a concern that the public going to have a concern with. Every time you turn around, we increase in rates. And one of them, I think, it goes up to $10 or more one year, I think, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what slide that was. Yeah, well, um, yeah, maybe we could, we could flip a couple slides there. Um, and so what, what the plan in terms of stormwater really contemplates is working within the existing rate you have in place for stormwater. So we're not talking about needing to raise the rate. And that also, I think, goes to the point in terms of working within the rate that is already in place and is already being charged for stormwater. You raised that rate, I think, last year, maybe the year before. And so also a major consideration, we said, all right, how are we going to fund these things is we don't want to raise that rate um, you know, until we absolutely have to. And so 
this plan for the moment says, all right, we're good with the existing revenues coming in. We don't need to go to council and say, hey, we need another rate increase on stormwater. And so that's one of the benefits of doing this is we're able to say the, the rate increase for the moment um, on stormwater is, is not needed. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's going to be my concern. Councilman Williams. You just cut yourself off. Cut yourself on. There you go. One minute. Now I'm going to do it. No, leave it. <laughs> Don't touch it. <laughs> do it again. How old in the world? I think he broke it. Good now? There okay. you go. Okay. All right. Well, actually, my question is I noticed in year 2024 that 10.92 million i think an increase why is it so much higher in 2024 than the other years because i noticed the other years was right around five million but then it just 2024 it just kind of jumps up to 10 points why yeah, is that so, increase so, yeah and, and this is on stormwater yes, yes. councilman um maybe we could flip just a couple pages there i think that that's probably going to be tied to, and maybe the manager knows some of the details there, but tied to specific projects that underlie, you know, the overall stormwater CIP. So uh, right there. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the page probably you're looking at. I think right. this is what is planned and appropriated. Um, I think one element I would say, and then I'll let the manager jump in here, is as we've put this together, what we've really tried to focus on to the greatest extent possible is only borrowing dollars when we really need them. And so what you see here in terms of the planned and, and I'll call it the appropriation year by year, what we'll end up doing on a year to year basis is going to be dependent upon when the dollars are really needed from a cash flow basis. So we don't want to be borrowing dollars necessarily too soon or sooner than they're needed. Um, and so in all likelihood, we'll probably borrow less than 10 million next year just dependent upon the timing of the underlying projects um, that, again, the manager may have some insights on in terms of what, what underlies that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll call Charles. Uh, Charles, you have the um, CIP. Uh, CIP, thank you. Yes. Um, in the adopted uh, CIP in the second year, which is fiscal year 24, there's 10 point nine million dollars worth of projects contemplated um, several of those um, are multi-year projects uh, that increase uh, in the second year will construction will be starting and so uh, it's basically just a, a carry forward of that and as Kyle mentioned we'll only be borrowing the amount of money that's needed for construction um, so that we're not front funding uh, you know, or borrowing more money than we need to uh, before we actually need to construct those projects if it's over a multi-year period. So it's essentially it's based on the adopted CIP. It's a it's that a larger approved. amount of CIP efforts in in that year, which creates that. And of course, you look at your CIP annually. So we'll be looking at that as we come back next year. Uh, but it's based on uh, the adopted CIP and the projects within that year for that CIP. So, so, Williams. so basically, this is an estimate. This is not. Well, it's a projection based on your adopted CIP. But okay. remember, you have a 10-year CIP. Okay. The first year is the year that we really are focused on. And as we come back with each year, you know, we adopt the CIP each year, and with that is the basis of funding okay. for each year. Did I answer your question, sir? Yes. Okay. Council, any other questions or comments? Um, if not, Kyle, I got a couple comments, a couple mm -hmm. questions. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't paying attention today. I don't know what the feds ended up doing with the rate. They were talking about increasing it as much as three quarters of a percent. They did, did that? Is that what they did? Yep, they did. Okay, well, that's too bad. All right, so we got a three-quarter of a percent increase here. And in regards to this stormwater enterprise, I mean, I understand the philosophy behind it, and but I'm also concerned, you know, somewhat about the debt service 
that now we're going to have as an expense within that fund. You know, I would hope that increased usage hopefully would be able to satisfy some of that debt service. I don't know if we've, I mean, it's something we're going to have to deal with uh, in our quest to keep our stormwater fees down just like we do our yep. water fees. You know, we would have tried to keep them down. Um, it's just, I guess, a reality. Uh, when we start doing this, and it looks like it's about, like I say, $28 million over five years, you're talking about a 20-year term. Uh, now, I know you also mentioned going uh, to the banks outside of the uh, public market, staying with the banks. Or banks, I mean, I know they normally don't do it for commercial entities, but are banks willing to lock in rates for 20 years for a municipality, or is it a 20-year amortization and we get locked in for five years? How does that work? They've, they've, they've still been willing to do 20-year loans with a 20-year fixed rate. Okay, so they um, will fix the rate for 20 years? Yeah, yeah, we, we think they will. And in fairness, that's why we go through the process. So you get surprised sometimes, and, and rates are certainly evolving. But that's why we go through a, a competitive process with a – you know, very wide net. Okay. Um, so, so we'll be able to answer that question definitively yeah, that, when we come back. That's good to know. But Normally, they don't do that in the public sector when it comes to, you know, commercial loans. Yeah. You're lucky to get a. Well, it used to be five, then it went to seven, and then it bounced around a little bit. You can find a ten every now and then, but that's good. Yeah, um, it's one of the advantages of, of of a being a city and, and b having the credit ratings that we do. In. Okay, and as far as our general obligation bonds, I know our thought process has always been the just in time. We don't want to borrow any money prematurely and be paying interest and pay interest on money that's just sitting in a pot and we're not using it yet. But would it be worth an analysis as we look down the road and anticipate, I mean, to some degree, I don't know what all the big financial pundits are predicting as to where these rates will eventually go, mm -hmm. but within the next... 12 months or so, what are we anticipating, and would it would we be better served to not wait to the last minute if we can borrow money now at this rate versus waiting six months and the rates have gone up two points, two and a half, or three points, which one is going to be more advantageous? So I don't, I mean, are we going to look at that possibility? Yeah, we certainly can. It's a fair question. Um, and I think, I think I'd answer that two ways. Um, one is there, there is no crystal ball, and so where rates ultimately go is going to depend on a lot of factors outside of our control. Um, I think the way the city's been able to operate historically um, is, is a little bit like uh, kind of dollar cost averaging in the investing world, if you use that corollary, whereby by virtue of having a CIP of the magnitude of yours, you end up kind of dipping your toe in the water basically every year, and thus by virtue of that, over a long time period, you're able to capture the, the really, really low rates we've had the last couple of years, and that's, you know, if you want to kind of think about, like, your average interest rate, that certainly has brought that average down, um, and now as rates have increased from there, but are still pretty favorable by a historical standard, um, I think that kind of dollar cost averaging approach still makes probably a lot of sense. Um, Again, just knowing that we've got uncertainty out there. Could rates go higher? They certainly could. Um, might they level out? Yeah, they, they, they may level out. But um, kind of the, the dollar cost averaging approach um, has worked well for you um, in the past. I think the other thing that, that we'd want to understand, we can actually absolutely look at this, is, is what really are our cash flow needs underlying some of these various capital projects. Um, and so we certainly can work with with the manager, work with Thielen and say, okay, does it make some sense to look, uh, you know, not just 12 months out, but maybe 18 months out in terms of, of what really are the needs um, in terms of cash flows tied to those, those capital projects. I think we want, to be, we want to be cautious about kind of overburdening the budget and taking on more debt service than we need in the short run, um, but maybe something in, you know, in the increment or in the middle um, it could make some sense. I mean, there's a lot of factors to consider for sure. And, and to the manager's point, I mean, the CIP is only etched in stone for that one year. So if we start looking out much past that 12-month right. period, then it could create an issue too. So it's, I'm sure it's not a 
that's what we're paying you guys the big money for, I think, is to figure out yeah, what and so, we're and supposed to be doing. It, to, to your point, what we've been thinking a lot about, um, especially since we moved very, very quickly from you know, just crazy low interest rates last year into rates that, that are certainly a bunch higher than they were last year but still historically favorable, um, is really trying to make sure that we're focusing upon what are the real cash flow needs underlying those projects. You obviously appropriate by virtue of being a city council in, in the budget, in the CIP, but then how that actually gets spent by the time the project is bid, by the time it's constructed, and the, you know, kind of the invoicing process. A lot of capital projects will take 12, 18 months to, to complete. And so as rates have started to rise, um, probably put even more focus upon when do we really need the dollars from a cash flow perspective and making sure we're, we're timing that smartly. Um, uh, you know, if it was maybe a year ago and rates were 200 basis points lower, um, that might be a different discussion, but I think that, that's come into even sharper focus this year um, as, as uh, you know, market rates have, have started to rise a little bit. So, all right, when do we really need the dollars to go out the door and let's make sure we're, we're kind of matching up the financing to that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council, any other questions or comments? If not, thank you for your presentation. Appreciate it very much. And looking forward to your advice. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the open part of our work session. Uh, we do have a motion for a closed meeting. Madam Clerk, will you please read the motion for consideration? Item number one, <laughs> pursuant to Virginia Code sections 2.2-3711A8 and A1, Consultation with legal counsel employed by a public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the legal advice of such counsel and the discussion, consideration, or interviews of prospective candidates for appointment and the assignment appointment is performance of specific public officers or appointees, specifically the appointments as shown in the attached list for vacancies or term expirations for the Clean Community Commission, the Early Childhood Development Commission, the Hampton Roads Planning District Commission, the Human Services Advisory Board, the Local Board of Building Code Appeals, the Paul D. Camp Community College Board, the Sister Cities Commission, the Tidewater Youth Services Commission, and the Western Tidewater Water Authority. Item number two, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A5 and A8, the discussion of a prospective business or industry or the expansion of an existing business or industry where no previous announcement has been made of the business or industry's interest in, le in locating or expanding its facilities in the community and consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by a public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel, specifically concerning EDIP proposals regarding Project Jersey and Project Stone. And item number three, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A3 and A8, the discussion or consideration of acquisition of real property for a public purpose or of the disposition of a publicly held real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body and consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by a public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of such legal advice by such counsel regarding tax map parcel asterisk, excuse me, tax map parcel 10 asterisk 46. Counsel, a motion would be in order. Vice Mayor Should I make Bennett? a motion? Not now. Vice Mayor Bennett? Mo move no. to approve. We have a motion for approval. Vice Mayor Bennett, Councilman Williams. Second it. A second for Councilman Williams. Any discussion of the motion? If not, council members prepare to vote. Please vote. Madam Clerk, please record the vote. The motion is approved by a vote of 7 to 0. Okay, before we adjourn to our closed session, Councilman Fawcett is requested to participate in our closed session meeting remotely, and to do so, a motion would be in order. Vice Mayor Bennett. Mayor, I move that Councilmember Roger Fawcett be approved to participate electronically in today's work session, I mean closed session, uh, because he's unable to be present of, on, med on medical conditions. Councilman Johnson. Second that, please. We have a motion in a second. Do we have any discussion of the motion? Hearing none, council members prepare to vote. Please vote. 
Madam Clerk, please record the vote. Motion is approved by a vote of 7 to 0. That concludes our work session. We will reconvene at 6 p.m.